Paul Fleming, uh, Maya Maya Road, Broadford, part of the Healthy Soils, Healthy Food project, which has been running from 2012 through to 2016. Property here is about 150 hectares, of which uh, we have about 20 hectares in two separate soil types uh, that have been treated with the recommended products over that period of time um, and adjacent to them control areas which we've also monitored. The objective was to evaluate the effectiveness of increasing soil biological activity on production. <clears throat> so in order to get productivity happening you've got first got to get your soil biology happening and you've got to do quite a few things in terms of preparing the nutrients in the soil. It, it actually commenced with uh, the use of fertilisers, gypsum, lime and, and some of the trace elements in more natural form. So we have soil tests going back to 2012 and we have had an agronomist, a guy from uh, Soil Management Systems, Brenton Biley, he came up with all of the recommendations in terms of additives to the soil and, and a program over three years. You've got all of, the, all of this um, phalaris that's, that's really starting to expand. Um, like, like everywhere you can see this shinier, this shinier ryegrass and that's really starting to take over which is just a a fantastic result. There's been, a, there's been a lot more happening in these soils. Look, look how far down. You know, they've, they're quite, quite a long little root. And of course, there's a phalaris plant right there. So that's what we want to see is, is a lot more of that mass of roots that are, that are getting further, further down the soil profile. The easily measured outcome to date has been an increase in productivity and a conservative 25 to 30 percent increase in dry matter production. Um, obviously difficult enough at times to to, to quantify with changes in seasonal conditions. But if you take it over three years of measurement, and the measurements were done by my visual appraisal of what was in the various cells, this is a part of a cell grazing operation. So as the animals left a cell, it would be a visual assessment of what dry matter was there. And then whatever number of days before they came back, whether it was 40 or 50 or 60 before they came back, the pasture uh, dry matter component was then measured. So the difference between the first and the last divided by the number of days was what pasture we'd actually grown in that time. What's the size of the cells? Uh, generally uh, from two or three hectares to five or six hectares. And, and how many cows in a box? Um, 50 to 70, 50 to 70. so cows. Yes. Yeah. So we have on the, on this property we just have a we have a cow and calf operation, and then we have our well they're our first and second calving cows, and we have our heifers ready for uh, joining the next season are all on this property. So at the moment there's there's um, 60 or 70, oh, 65 or 70 cows and 60 heifers that are that are starting AI next week. Well, I think just seeing it uh, is, is telling me that it looks better. Um, the figures are showing me that it produces better. The inputs are reasonably economical, assuming that 
we don't have to have huge inputs over the next few years. That will be determined by future soil tests, but um, yeah, certainly you've only, you've only got to look at it to see that it is really much better than some of the adjoining pastures. If you, if you went back up to where those cattle are, you'd see that it's quite a different situation. I'm a firm believer that everybody who's got some land, or nearly everyone who's got some land, would like to see it enhanced, more productive or look better, or they would like a better feel about the way they're going to leave it to the next generation and so forth.